I'm Donald Bell for Cool Tools, and in a previous video, I went over the Anchor PowerPort Solar Light Solar Charger and talked to you about how I've been using that system for recharging my USB battery packs, which I then use at night to recharge my phone. It's been great, but it took me a while to dial in the process, and I learned a lot along the way. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some tips and hacks for getting the most from your portable solar charger. My first mistake was setting this up in a window instead of setting it up outside in direct sunlight. I don't know enough about solar to tell you why this is, but my charging speed went up dramatically when I found a place to mount these outside. It's less convenient, but the difference is dramatic. Which is another tip. With just some nails or screws, you can create a hook for the loops on the panel, making it easy to temporarily mount outside. I picked two places in my yard that get the best sun throughout the day and popped in some screws and covered the exposed threads of the screws with gaffer tape so that they wouldn't eat into the loops. Nails would have worked just as well. And when you hang it, you can use the loops that are in the corners or you can use this loop right here in the middle to hang it from just one point. Now, another thing I learned the hard way is to not leave this up into the evening or overnight. When the light gets low, the output gets low and it can cycle the charge circuit in these batteries in and out of sleep, causing them to actually lose power or falsely report that they're full when they're not. For best results, I take this out in the morning, I hang it up and then I collect it close to dusk. Another thing, don't be fooled by the two USB ports on the solar charger. You really can't hope to charge more than one device at a time. In my experience, having two things plugged in really just choke the power going to either device. Finally, consider heat. Whether you're charging a phone or a battery pack, those both have their own overheating protection that will prevent them from working or charging if they think they're too hot. But here you are, putting them in direct sunlight for hours at a time. So I don't recommend using the built-in pouch on the panel. You could use a longer USB cable and store your battery or gadget in a cooler spot, or you could do what I did and use one of these insulated fireproof LiPo charging bags to keep your battery in. I had one of these handy already from charging drone batteries, so I gave it a try and it's been working great. It's around $8, it can fit my big battery and keep it cool, and the Velcro on here is really strong so I don't worry about things falling out. At this point, I've committed to using it this way, so I glued it to the back of the power port with E6000 glue that can handle high temperature. I recommend this hack, though it definitely ruins the skinny look of the solar panels. Like I said in the previous video, using this setup, I can charge the big pack here with about a day and a half of direct sunlight, even if it's slightly overcast. Once charged, that pack can recharge my phone for over a week while I charge up some of these smaller batteries and swap them in when the others drained. Overall, it's been a good way for me to dip my toe into harvesting solar energy, and I'm especially glad to have this as part of my disaster prep kit. I hope these tips were helpful. You can find Amazon links to the charger and the batteries and the charging bag all in the description. And remember, you can see thousands of reader-recommended products like this at cool-tools.org.